Okay, Coach, we're having a, a hard time hearing you. Brian, can you adjust speaker? Okay, Sarah didn't hear your answer, so if you don't mind just giving it again. How we play, we need to get better when we think. Miles, I'm, sorry, I'm still not catching any of this. I'm just gonna re I'm gonna rely on the recording afterward. Miles early. Hey, Coach, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, at halftime, Michaela Onyanwede was one of ten, and she had four or five left-handed uh, layups to rim out. To start the second half, I noticed she shifted over to the right side and immediately drove and and finished a few, and ended with sixteen points on four of six shooting in that second half. Just how impressed were you with her perseverance tonight and how can she build on that performance going forward? I really think she did a good job being aggressive. Um, one of her lingering issues is getting the two feet. And when she goes off the two feet, she tends to draw fouls, she tends to finish better. Uh, she's had a habit for, for a while now, going off of one foot at something to work on quite a bit. And, um, I was really happy with the way that she attacked. Uh, she got into the paint, you know, at will, and uh, she just struggled to finish. But um, I think it's definitely something to build on that she sees how effective she can be when she attacks the rim. Thank you. And in the first quarter, um, both teams got off to a slow shooting start. It was about 10 to 8, 7 minutes in, and Chicago called a timeout. And after that break, they began, they began to leak out in transition and get some easy layups. What were you seeing? And that kind of got them into the rhythm offensively. What were you seeing in the transition game? And, and that seemed to slow down in the second half. Did you talk about it at halftime? Uh, they, they really came out. And, and the, the issue, the, the thing that we talked about the most, uh, execution and our energy while it did there were lapses um similar to last game you know we came out doing the things that we needed to do and didn't hit shots and um i don't know that i don't know that it got to us mentally or or what but then the, the wheels kind of started to fall off defensively again it's really exactly what happened last game um so that's why I say the, the execution of what we do is really slipped. I mean, Chicago ran our inbounds play on us a few times, we got layups, and you know we've been running that inbounds play all year and haven't set a proper back screen. Um, it's it's stuff like that that we talk about that are that's frustrating. Our, our execution is not up to par with our energy and our and our want to. Um, I think it's a good problem to have when you don't have a group. You have to implore to play hard, but it's frustrating uh, to address the same things and and not have them improve consistently. And so uh, I don't say that I'm frustrated with them. I think we're all frustrated um, because I, I know that they're doing the work and it hasn't translated yet. So uh, what you have to do is stay the course. Um, they've shown that they're capable of playing this way uh, and, and being really successful on, on both ends of the floor, I just think get a little low here and, and we're gonna continue to address it and do what we can. Thank you so much. Howard Bigdo. Hey Walt, um, I got a couple for you if I could. Um, obviously early on in the season when you guys were getting the shots where and when you wanted them, uh, Sabrina was playing considerably more than she's been able to recently. I just wonder how much you think Sabrina's relative limits have played a part in how often you're able to get the shots you're looking to get. Um, I thought we generated really the, the exact wide open point shots we wanted early on in this game. And, you know, like I always say, I have to go back and watch the film. It's uh, different live than it is when, when you look at the film, but um, 
I didn't think these last couple of games generating good looks for us was an issue. Mm -hmm. um, against LA, definitely the pressure you know made it hard for us and kind of found a way. But uh, I, I don't know how much uh, that's affected our ability to, to create good shots. Obviously, she has a proclivity for creating shots for other people, and um, it's something she's very good at. But uh, I think that we've done a pretty good job of that, um, you know, in spite of the, the challenges she's had. Well, so I, I just related to that then. I'm curious in what ways you do see her reduced minutes changing what you're able to do. And, and, and I guess also, obviously, she's been – playing reduced minutes, you talked about having to manage your minutes. Is there an understanding from the doctors that there's a pathway to getting back to her minutes that she was playing at the start of the year? Or is this something you expect to have to kind of manage with her for the rest of the season? Um, you know, it's, it's hard for me to say, to be honest. I, I don't, I don't know how it's going to go after the Olympic break. I think that rest, the fact that that rest is going to be really, really good for her. Um, you know, and, and as it stands right now, it's a really tricky balance of trying to win games, trying to keep her in shape, chemistry, um, you know, with her on the court. And, and when she's not on the court, creating chemistry with other groups and other combinations. Um, but, you know, while, while she's struggling with this, it's, defensively, it's just difficult. Um, in particular, you know, she's so gifted offensively that she can kind of get by on one leg. But defensively, I mean, I don't think that player in the league can get by with that. So, um, you know, one of the things that we're going to talk about and continue to work on is, you know, are there ways uh, that she can navigate screens and, and, you know, different defensive assignments that allow her to, uh, I guess, just handle, um, you know, the, the pain and, um, the ability to really burst off of that leg. And, and I know she's given us everything she can. She's, she's a warrior. Um, but, it, you know, it, it's also a challenge on our end to, to balance, you know, the, the minutes and, and, you know, getting people in there who, you know, might not be um, as creative offensively, but who are more solid right now defensively. So, it, it, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's challenging. Thanks, Juan. Appreciate it. Jeff Magliocchetti. Coach, thank you for joining us. What can you say about the way Dee Dee Richards responded to extended opportunities tonight? And what did you think of your team's fight overall in the second half, a half you won by a 41-36 final? Um, yeah, I thought, I thought we fought. I mean, they fight. This group fights. They really do. Um, they're fun. They're fun to work with. They're fun to coach. Um, Dee Dee was really good as she has been all year. Uh, you know, she's one of those people who stays ready uh, whenever she's called on, and it's impressive. You know, I know that anybody's been in, in a situation where you know sometimes you don't play, sometimes you play 25 minutes, um, and everything in between. It's hard to stay ready and, and stay um, you know, continue to be effective and, and continue. To and, and support your teammates. She's just brilliant in that way. So, uh, yeah, I thought I thought Deke did a lot of good things tonight. I'm excited to go back and look at the film and then show her all the good things and building on. What was your message to the team in the halftime locker room after things didn't go your way in the second half? After a promising start where you get Chicago into foul trouble with five fouls, all of which go to the line. So what would you tell your team in the halftime locker room? Um. You know, it's, it was really an acknowledgement of frustration that we're capable of, of being much better than we were. Um, not making shots is one thing, but you can continue to, to get stops on the other end. You can continue to stick to your defensive principles, I think. Um, you know, if you watched our team early, I thought we were much more uh, locked in on, on doing the things that we needed to do. Um, consistently, and and now we we continue to kind of take liberties um, with how we guard, and and you know we, there's more switching and there's more kind of ad living on the defensive end, and um, I, I I don't think that's helped us. So I think getting back to consistent um, principles 
defensively for you now. Appreciate your time and insight, Coach. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. Next up, we have Sammy Whitcomb. Jackie Powell. Hey, Sammy. Thanks for and, um, being with us tonight. Um, so Coach Hopkins has spoken a bit about how the defense has been ad-libbing um, and going away from... Uh, can you hear me now? I can just hear you now. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So, so sorry about that. Um, so Coach Hopkins uh, spoke to us about how the defense has maybe been ad-libbing and going away from your principles a bit. Why do you think that's been happening in these past couple of games? Um, I think it's a focus thing for us probably. Uh, and I think, um, you know, when we don't get maybe a few stops in a row, we I, I call it going rogue. If someone does something. I think we do it with the right intentions, but – Obviously, it takes everybody else out of what we're doing. Um, we're not prepared for that. And sometimes it creates open looks for the team. So, um, absolutely, someone that has done that. Um, it's just, I don't know. It's one of those things that we just have to be talking about what we're trying to do and not not get confused, not get um, too aggressive or too excited in different, in different possessions. And if, if the coverage is not to double, we can't just randomly double. And if the coverage is, we have to make sure we're there. And that's been a really big issue for us. Even, even in L.A., honestly, but certainly these last. Right. And so what what is the difference that you've seen or what are some of the differences that you've seen in this team now versus how you all started the season? Um, I would say I feel like we're we're just not all on the same page. I feel like when we started the season, we were very connected and it was almost surprising because we are such a new Together, but I thought that connectedness really um, it made up for a lot of you know errors and things that we were doing. You know, it's not like we were playing perfectly, but we were working really hard and we were together and we were talking and like I said, we were very connected. So it felt like you know even if someone messed up, we had each other's backs. Um, I just yeah, I think we're missing that right now, and I don't think it's again it's it's a focus thing. It's a we're all frustrated, obviously losing, um, and we just have to get past that. We have that together and we have to figure out how to do that together. Thanks so much, Sammy. I appreciate it. Cortland Griffin. How you doing, Sammy? Cortland Griffin with a three-point conversion. <clears throat> Didi came in for a stretch. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Didi came in for a stretch and she seemed to give you guys a spark. Um, she got the early steal, uh, made a couple of bu uh, made a bucket. What can you say and what can you speak on uh, her and all season? Like, she's done really good things when she's been in the game. Can you speak on her? Yeah, I mean, it is it is what TD does, and I think you know, we continue to say that. And obviously, um, you know, there's just it's just different opportunities, different games that she's able to get those um, minutes. But she, every single time, capitalizes on them. She makes most of them. She makes far. It's... Um, you know, it's 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 her style, it's her DNA, and how she how she plays. She works hard. She's smart. She's got great hands. She's athletic. Um, she reads the game, the game really well. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's 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 inspiring to us, but it's also you know we we can't we can't rely on her coming in these games. You know, when we're down like that, to do that, we need to do that, and then we need to have her come in and continue to do that. And I felt like you know that was the difference early on as well. We start the game that way. She'd come in. The group that would come in second, when they would all do that. It would just continue to lift us. And now I feel like we're not starting that way, and we're trying to have you know, and Jazz and players come in and get us going. And it just, yeah, it needs to start with that first group, sure. But Dee Dee's fantastic. Um, I'm never worried that she 
ready or not ready. I know she'll be ready and I know she'll make them. And as a veteran on the team, you guys going into Atlanta on Saturday, uh, what what do you what do you think uh, would be a key for you guys to bounce back after these two tough losses? Defense, talking, defense. Look, we missed shots for sure, but we didn't get stops. Um, I don't think we executed at all, at all. And that's part of the missing shot, um, I think, for us. So execution on both sides of the floor. And it's, I mean, it's a focus thing. You know, we work hard, but it's a focus thing. And we have to be locked in, and we're not. So it's 100% in our hands, for sure. Thank you, Sammy. Howard McDowell. Hey, Sammy. So obviously you've experienced what it is to lose your floor leader in Seattle with Sue and have find ways to overcome that. Obviously, it's a little bit different because Sabrina's playing, but you're not getting as much of her as obviously you were earlier in the season. I just I'm wondering if there are some lessons and takeaways from going through that in Seattle that you can bring here. And whether having a floor leader who's kind of compromised in this way affects the connectedness, as you put it, on the offensive end. Yeah, I mean, it's that, you know, next man up mentality. I thought we did a good job of that. Like, Sav's obviously not someone that you can replace with one player. It's the everybody has to do more, everybody has to step up. Um, and it's not, it's not that we're never doing that or we're not doing that. We're just not doing that with consistency. Mm -hmm. And obviously, you know, we get Sab back now and she's working her way back in and that's awesome. But we have to continue to have that mentality. We have to continue to each of us do more and do, do our parts as well. Um, obviously, it's never easy. And, you know, that could perhaps speak to some of that disconnectivity, um, you know, that's different from that beginning stages. But uh, I don't think it's, I don't think we can blame it on that. I, I think it's other things. I think, you know, it's not, um, it's not one thing like that. I think it's a few things. I think we have to, like I said, we have to sort of um, all of us come together individually, collectively, and work through this. Um, you know, there's still, still a long season, but we have to work this out. There's no, you know, there's no magic or there's no magic anything. Like, we've, we've got to figure this out. And I guess the flip side of from a few weeks ago, given that, you know, up and down this roster, people are capable of hitting shots. You look at a box store with a four for 25 from three and just uh, are able to more easily shrug it off, given uh, the personnel on this team. Am I able to easily shrug it off? No. Um, because, like I said, we are capable of making those shots, but we're not executing. So, yes, we're getting shots. And some of them are some of them are good shots, but um, not all of them are within what we're trying to do. And I think it, we also are missing a lot of, um, you know, at the rim ones too, and we're turning the ball over way too much. Um, so no, obviously, you know, you you can you can shake off uh, a four for whatever a bad shooting night in a close game where you are locked in defensively and you play defense. You can you can accept that then. I don't think it's fair to accept this kind of a shooting night and then a twenty point loss with every point. Like that's that's not okay. So you can you can have a bad shooting night. You can't not show up defensively as well. Thanks, Sam. We appreciate it. Thank you, Sarah Valenzuela. Hey, Sammy. Sorry, it's been a while for me. Um, in the middle of the second quarter, as you were jogging back to, um, as you were jogging across the court, it kind of looked like you were in a little bit of pain. I was wondering if that was just regular, like in the middle of the game exhaustion, or are you feeling anything? Um, like, is there is there something wrong? No, nothing wrong. I think it's probably just, uh, yeah, I think. Okay. Thank you. Miles Ehrlich. Hi, Sammy. Uh, following up a little bit on, on Howard, in that first quarter, you had about four threes that hit the rim twice and rimmed out and just didn't fall. Uh, and after that, the team as a whole started to attack more in the second half. Was that in response to just those shots not falling and as a way to try to spark you and get back into the game by getting to the rim? I mean, yes and no. Um, I mean, we still want to take the shots, they're good shots. You know, for us, we always say that the numbers will sort of even out. Obviously, they didn't. But we do want to take the shots when they're open, when they're good looks. Um, I think it was more 
Like we had that advantage as well to the rim and we needed to exploit them. If they were switching, we had bigs on smalls, smalls on bigs and to take advantage of that and, and not settle for outside shots. I think we started to a little bit settle. So I thought that that was just in response to how they were defending us. We were playing a little bit smarter, a little bit with more intention how we were doing things. And I thought we had success with that. Um, and yeah, I mean, we probably needed to do it sooner. Um, but like I said, that's a focus thing too. We just weren't, we weren't always patient enough to always see those mismatches, unfortunately. Yeah, I thought we had success. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sammy. Next up, we have Kylie Shield. Please raise your hands if you have questions for Kylie. Jackie Powell. Hey, Kylie. Thanks so much for being here with us tonight. I'm curious if you could sort of diagnose what you think the difference is that you see in this team now versus the way you all started the season. Um, I would just say execution, um, being more focused and mentally there, uh, knowing that every game is going to be a fight and every, every game we have to go out like the beginning of the season, not be content with where we are and focus on the bigger picture. Right. And so Coach Hopkins also spoke about how at times the defense has been ad-libbing and maybe going away a bit from the principles. Why, in your perspective, does this ad-libbing happen and how can you fix it? Um, well, in my case, sometimes I feel like the need to step up maybe because they've hit a few jumpers or I feel like I want to get them out the rhythm, but that's not what we need to focus on. That's, we need to focus on what we do every day in practice. Um, but I think that just goes back to the focus. Um, what was the second part of the question? And it's, how do you guys fix that? Um, again, I think practice reps, of course. Um, we were talking about making practice more intense. So, because you practice like you play. Um, and then, like I said, just going back to mental mental focus, mental, mental game, um, knowing what we need to do, going in the game ready, knowing what we need to do. Great. And the last one for me is, you know, what did you see from how Michaela was playing, you know, not only in offense, but on defense, being able to, you know, stay with Candace Parker? Yeah, Michaela, um, as I've said before, she's an amazing player, amazing person. She tries, she gives great effort, 100 maximum every, every night. So it's not a surprise about how she played, how she did. And she knows Candace is a good player. So she came into the game knowing that, knowing that she has to stop her, including last game she was in the 20s. Um, but offensively, she just kept attacking. Shots weren't falling in the beginning, so she got to the rim and scored. Thanks so much, Kylie. I appreciate it. Heaven Hill. Hey, Kylie. Always a pleasure talking to you. Um, tonight, you had 11 rebounds, and I saw early in the fourth quarter you had a great steal that freed up Sammy Whitcomb to get a layup in transition. Can you just speak tonight about your performance, you know, defensively, offensively? Uh, I saw you tied for the, the game high with boards. So, yeah, can you just talk a little about your effort on the glass? Um, before the game, I had to film with Coach Wall, and uh, we were talking about being more aggressive, um, just the things that he's noticed from how I can get better in film is – finding contact, finding on rebounds offensively. And this game to try to get a double-double, although uh, points were there. But um, that was really my main focus, just go on rebound, be aggressive, create space. And then, like you said, with the drive-in, I mean, I saw that she was open and they were recovering. So I just had to fill it off for her. I mean, it's a team game. And I think we all do good when we share the ball. Jeff Maglio-Chetty. Mm -hmm. Hi, Kylie. Thank you for joining us. How big was it from a team standpoint to emerge from the second half with a 41-36 advantage in spite of everything that happened in the first? Um, I, I feel like we just got grounded, talked to each other. 
um, got the momentum flowing kind of on our side, which we didn't have before. So had to come out strong, focus on what we need to focus on. And I mean, it didn't end up in our favor, but I feel like we need to start games with that momentum, with that aggressiveness and carry it on throughout the entire game. Cause I don't feel like we've ever put a full four quarters together. We have parts. And if we have a full four quarters, I think we'll be amazing. That second half, though, it has – it's obviously way too early to decide this, but at the same time, it has something that could plant the seeds of a bit of a turning point for this squad. So what's the biggest lessons that you guys could take away from that second half other than, you know, adapting it to a full game and apply it to your future, your, inclu- your future, including these next six games before the Olympic break? I think it just shows us the potential that we can have. I mean, we came out strong. We came – we are fighting to get back in the game and we did that so if we just come out and punch first then of course there's going to be punches back but we just need to have the punch first mentality and just go with the flow be aggressive and push the ball appreciate your time and insight thank you kylie thank you corlin griffin how you doing kylie it's corlin griffin with the three-point conversion uh as as mentioned before you had a great night rebounding the ball but i wanted to know as far as with tasha out um, and it's just you and Kia Stokes, really, the two bigs on the team. Have you guys picked Tasha's brain at all, um, you know, to get pointers on how to defend or or attack the rim or play within the offense? Yeah, Tasha, she's, she's amazing. Even though she's not in the game right now, um, she's always talking with me, always telling me what to do. What If I did something and I have a question, I'm, she's the first person that I go to, like, how do I hook? How do I create contact? So she's definitely been a big um, – influenced me um even though she's she's on the sidelines she's telling me correcting me and helping me and uh I realize that you guys are a young team you guys have a lot of first year second year players but you guys don't play like second year or first year players at times um what positives or what can you take away from that as a positive going forward um honestly it's funny that you bring that up because Jocelyn just brought that up the other day and um she kind of went and she kind of told us like the mentality I mean, we are young, but, like, we need to be mentally strong, mentally there. And, um, I mean, we've had experience. It is our second year in the league for most of us, some of us. But um, there's a difference between playing like you've been here and being confident versus being timid because we don't know what we're doing. So I think that's a big aspect as to why we don't play as young as we are because we're all we have. And I think we're a great group. We just got to come out and be more consistent. Thank you, Kylie, and good luck on Saturday. Miles Ehrlich. Hi, Kylie. You finished a couple of nice passes from Sabrina Unescu off the pick and roll, and you've been cutting a lot more aggressively in the last couple of games. Just what were you seeing, especially from the Chicago defense? And Sammy was saying that they were switching a lot. So were you finding mismatches and, and taking advantage of that? Was Sabrina finding you there? Yes, definitely. Every time Sabrina is in the game, I know she's looking and she's a great passer, so – more motivation to cut and roll and all that stuff. But yeah, like you said, they were switching a lot. So uh, we could have used utilize, uh, what they were doing more against them. We could have either skipped into the corner, rolled in, or have had our guards attack the post players. But I mean, it all goes to experience correcting it and seeing it. Thanks so much.